Hello everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff. And today's topic of discussion is technique of water distribution. So in this uh, video lecture, we are going to discuss about the various ways in which the irrigation water can be applied to the field. So let's jump on to the first method of your irrigation, and that is the free flooding. So free flooding, as the name suggests. Uh, basically, we flood the field with the water. Right? There is not much control over the quantity of water that will be applied on the field. Right? So basically, in this method, what I can say is that we have uh, one main supply line where the water is flowing. Right? We have a main supply line. Where the water is flowing, and uh, from these main supply lines, few subsidiary drains are passed. Right? From these main supply lines, few subsidiary drains are passed. So these are nothing but our subsidiary drains, or we can say subsidiary ditches. And these subsidiary ditches carries the water to the field. These are the subsidiary ditches, and this are let's say these are the plants or the crops that require certain water for irrigation purpose, right? And we want to deliver the water. So these plants, right? So this water is brought to uh, to the plants with the help of these subsidiary ditches, and in these ditches there are certain outlet points. There are certain outlet points that are made, and the water is allowed to pass through these outlet and basically flood the Area with the with the ample quantity of water, right? So as we can see here, that there is not much control over the quantity of water that can be applied to the respective field, right? So all we have is the surplus quantity of water that is reaching the field through the subsidiary ditches, and this water basically flooded the land with the surplus quantity of water. Right. So repeating again, this is our main supply line. This is our main supply of water. This are our subsidiary ditches. These are our subsidiary ditches that carry the water towards the field. And these subsidiary ditches have these subsidiary ditches have the outlet points. Right. So these are our outlet points. These are our outlet points that carry the water to or deliver the water towards the field, and this water flows the whole land. All right. So this is what your field flooding is. This is our excavator on the field from where the water is moved all across the field. And like this, no too little attempt is being made to control the quantity of water. And because of this, uh, this free flooding is also called as the wild flooding or the ordinary flooding. Now, this kind of uh, flooding technique or irrigation technique is suitable for the close growing crops. It is suitable for the uh, rolling lands and the crops that requires huge quantity of water. Now, because uh, there is no uh, provision to take care of the uniform distribution of water all across the field, and uh, there is no control over the quantity of water uh, that will be applied or be, will be absorbed by the plant or the crop, the water application efficiency is very low in this kind of method. Right. So this method has a very low water application efficiency. So here in this image we see an example of a pre-flooding technique, and basically here we can see we have the main water supply line. 
from where the uh, substrate is being excavated and from there there will be some opening from where the water is being supplied to the section of the feed and you can see the whole area is being flooded with the water right so uh, the whole area is basically being, is being flooded with the water and uh, the crops that require a sufficient amount of or high amount of uh, water uh, for that the pre flooding technique may work next kind of uh, water application technique is the border flooding and border flooding is uh, is a next step uh, of the pre flooding technique and here basically what we do is we try to control the quantity of water that is uh, going to be applied on the field how do we uh, control the quantity of water to be applied to the field uh, we do that by dividing the land into number of strips right we divide the land into number of uh, low leaves uh, or the strips which are also called as the borders so, so here we divide the land into number of strips or border where the each section or the strip is is confined to the width of 10 to 20 meters and uh, extend to a length of 100 to 400 meters right so again drawing a schematic diagram for uh, this border planning technique so just like a free flowing technique we have uh, we have one main water supply line that will be running near to the field right so we have this main water supply line that will be running across the field or near to the field and here what we do is basically we divide the land into number of strips right so what we have we divide the land into number of strips and in between the strips we have ditches or sections where the crops are sown so these are the sections in which the sowing of the crop is basically done and in between this we have the strips or you can say also called as low leaf borders the width as we have already discussed is around 10 to 20 meters 10 to 20 meters and the length extend 100 to 400 meters right and this is the these strips have small openings right? these strips have these small openings from where the flooding of these strips is done right so this whole area will be flooded with water this whole area will be flooded with water and through the infiltration and cassivations the section of, of the crop this section where the crops are planted or sown uh, here the uh, the roots will absorb the moisture and the irrigation will be done right so this is your plan view and if you want to look from the sides or from the front we have the view can be explained like this so this is here we have some high rise in these sections where the copper zone and here we have the water like this okay so this is uh, how the uh, flooding is done in the border flooding method right so this is an example where we can see we have the strips where the water is passed and moving to it we have the uh, areas where the uh, crops are sown another example for the border flooding method is shown in this image we have these strips and we have the areas where the uh, crops are sown right so uh, we have uh, one formula which is used to find out the time required by the water of or the discharge to cover a specific area 
and uh, i'll be discussing uh, that formula and we'll do a sample numerical in the uh, in the upcoming video right so as and when i prepare uh, the video of that uh, the link i will put in the description box as well as in the uh, in the key card somewhere here okay uh, so the third method for the uh, uh, for the water application is the check flooding method and basically it is a um, step again ahead of the border flooding where the, another uh, small step is taken to control the quantity of water to be applied on the field and how do we do that uh, we do it by constructing small low and flat leaves right and these uh, leaves are what restrains the water uh, to a specific area and the uh, the water is applied to that section of the field right and this method is suitable for low and uh, as well as high permeable soil and basically here what we do is we have uh, just like uh, before we have the main supply line and if this is like the whole area where the uh, irrigation need to be done we divide this whole uh, field into uh, different different section by uh, by uh, constructing leaves all across the field and from here the water is applied so water in the respective section will start to hold right and as soon as uh, this section is filled a small gap is prepared and from there the water pass on to the next section right so this is uh, an example of how the check flooding is done right so we can see here that uh, the small leaves are being constructed all across the field which ensures that the each section is and each section has sufficient amount of water right this is another image of uh, check flooding we can see the land is divided into number of areas right and where the irrigation is being done <coughs> then uh, we have another method of uh, water application and that is called as the basin flooding and this is a special type of uh, check flooding uh, that is uh, selected in the especially in the areas where the there is scarcity of water and we want to reduce the losses that that is taking place from the water and what we here we do is we basically create a small embankment all across the the crop and uh, the water is applied in that section uh, specifically right and this kind of irrigation technique is is very popular for irrigating the orchard trees right so here uh, uh, so let's say we have to supply water to this tree so instead of flooding whole land right instead of flooding the whole land we create uh, an embankment and we provide the water into that section only right and uh, through this we are able to conserve a good quantity of water we are able to reduce the losses that take place during the supply of water or flooding the water flooding the land with the water so when we uh, adopt the basin flooding for multiple crop this is how we adopt each uh, crop a is surrounded with the embankment and from uh, there the water is being applied right so you can very well imagine here that if you we would have uh, flooded the whole whole field with the water the quantity of the water that was required would have been very very high as well as the losses that would have taken place would have been very high right so through this we are able to minimize all those after this we have the next method of irrigation called as the furrow irrigation method and furrows are nothing but the narrow ditches that are constructed where the irrigation water is being supplied right so again here only 20 to 25% of the land is wetted and hence the losses are minimized to a greater extent right so these small ditches are called as the furrows right and in between these ditches we we cultivate our crops right and through the capillary actions um, and infiltration and percolation the water is being absorbed uh, by the roots of the crop and the cultivation takes place then the next method for the application or, or the irrigation method is the sprinkle irrigation 
and uh, here the water is being supplied through a network of pipes and pumps right and uh, the water that is applied is applied in the form of spray just like here in the image shown so we have uh, we, we will be having a network of pipes that are being connected right that are not shown right now here in the image and from here the water is basically being supplied uh, and uh, at a very high pressure and then uh, through the spray the water is being applied to the crops now this kind of uh, irrigation technique that is the sprinkler irrigation technique is very useful in case we have the irregular topography right suppose we have a very irregular topography right we have a very irregular topography where the cultivation is there right so uh, using this uh, this uh, sprinkler irrigation technique ensures that water is reached to to a wider area right if you would have used uh, uh, the flood irrigation method then the water would not have been evenly distributed throughout the land right same goes for the contrary uh, methods like basin flooding chat flooding right and uh, like the the methods like the furrow irrigation technique would have been proved quite extensive to do in such kind of uh, such kind of land right so this kind of irrigation method is very useful in irregular topography this method is useful uh, when water table is very high and uh, in case of high or low perennial soil this method proves to be very beneficial again in the uh, in case we want to reduce the seepage loss this method is very useful and uh, in areas where water is not uh, easily available uh, is suitable sprinkler irrigation method is uh, beneficial right and this method requires uh, less quantity of labor compared to the uh, contrary methods uh, but then again there are certain disadvantages attached uh, to this method so the first one is that it has high evaporation loss so of course in the uh, high temperature area we, uh, if we use this method and water is being sprinkled so because of uh, high temperature the amount of evaporation that will take place will be fairly high uh initially the installation requires huge amount of money right and uh, of course the maintenance or, or is also compared to the contrary um, uh, methods uh, the maintenance of pump is required uh, we have to ensure that the water flows with certain pressure so that uh, maintenance is also fairly high compared to the other methods discussed before this and there is certain requirement uh, though the requirement of labor is not as much as Uh, with respect to the other method that we have discussed but there is requirement of some technical manpower that ensure that uh, that the uh, required pressure is there in the in the pipe uh, and uh, uh, the constant uh, flow of water uh, at certain pressure is taking place right so these are certain uh, disadvantages that are attached to the sprinkler irrigation method then the last method for uh, water application is the drip irrigation method which is also called as the sprinkle or trickling irrigation method and the uniqueness of this method is that basically the water is directly applied to the root zone or the roots of the plant using the drip nozzles and by doing so by directly applying the water to towards the root of the plant we completely eliminate or we like minimize to the greater extent the evaporation and the percolation loss that would have been uh, taking place this is uh, an example of your drip irrigation method where we see network of pipes that are uh, directly connected uh, or adjoined to the root of the plants and basically these uh, through this pipe the water is applied directly to the roots of the plant right so, so here is a much more detailed image where we can see the water is applied at the root of the plant right so this was all uh, for the techniques of water application on a field so i hope the video was useful to you and if so uh, please do like the video and post your views in the comment section and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and press the bell icon for regular notification thank you for watching have a nice day